everyone. Welcome to the Startup to Eden podcast. I was joined today by Matt and Oliver, the founders of Compass, an innovative marketing company that gives consumers more information about the products that they're looking to buy. Matt and Oliver recently came through Audacious, our student startup program, and so came on the show to share some of their experience of the program, as well as what their plans are for the future and how they're going to give consumers the information they need to know about the products that they're looking to buy from supermarkets, at beer festivals, um, at wine tastings, etc. So if you're interested in any of those topics, tune into the show. Hi everyone, welcome to the Startup to Needham podcast. I'm joined today by Matt and Ollie, the founders of Compass. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Cheers. Yeah, thank you very much. No worries. Uh, the first question we always ask any founders on the show is to elevate a pitch their business. So would you mind elevate a pitch in Compass and what it is that you do? Sure thing. Um, so we'll start off with the problem. So the problem that we were looking at is that consumers, modern day consumers um, are wanting more and more information about the products that they're purchasing in regards to sustainability and traceability. So we came up with the idea of Compass. Yeah, so Compass is basically uh, like we're using NFC tag. Mm. And um, we place them on the shelf where the product is located. And with your phone, you can actually scan the tag and then get heaps of consumer oriented information, mm. such as like where the product is from, um, what it matches well with. Um, and yeah, heaps of stuff that you might want to know about your product and that you can't have on a regular product label. Yeah, so we bring a customer service salesperson straight to your phone in the places that you wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. Cool. And who would you say is the target user or target customer or something like that? So we sell to businesses. Um, okay. So our sort of target market are uh, consumer goods that people take time to look into and really care about. Mm. Um, so sort of the markets that we're hoping to get into are the wine and beer and spirits industry. So alcohol and then sort of baby food, mm -hmm. baby related products and pet products because that's you know what um, people really take time to look into those. Yeah, we were also thinking maybe um, like coffee bags, tea okay. bags and all stuff that you might want to know where, where it's from. Well, there's a big movement in sort of looking into the origin of coffee, right? Yeah. 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 So hopefully, well, if we do work with coffee uh, companies, then we'll be able to um, show people, you know, where it's from. Yeah. yeah. Without all of that needing to be crammed onto a package or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to highlight, the NFC tag is on the shelf, not the actual packaging, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. We did that because, um, well, first it saves a lot of cost for the mm -hmm. business, so they don't actually have to like raise the price, the price of their products, um, and just being on the shelf, it also creates like lots of awareness around the tags. So if a consumer mm. um, walks into like a new world or something, he, like if it's on the shelf, he can really like spot the tag and know that that product. Well, you can have more information about it. Sure. Um, yeah. And also Compass is there to help people in the uh, decision making process. Mm -hmm. So once they've bought the product, they're not going to care as much as when they were thinking about buying it. Yeah. So that's yeah, why it's on the okay. shelf and not the product. Okay. That makes sense. Was that always the case? Was that always what you guys were planning or has that no. changed and sort of <laughs> developed over time? No. So we, when we were doing our market research and talking to businesses, that's one of the things that was really highlighted was trying to keep costs down. Um, so by putting it on the shelf, you know, it's going to keep costs down for them. Mm. And was so that's something that the the business owners are interested from a marketing perspective of thinking that it's going to help with their sales and improve that improve the bottom line yeah yeah, yeah definitely so we, we sort of see it as if um, one company has it compared to the other mm. competitors they're going to see that as a competitive advantage so that sure. other companies will say that oh they're using this product and it's helping them to sell more so we want to get on board as well and early adopters you're thinking places like the kind grocer or where conscious consumers kind of already shot yes yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly so we're thinking like um well at the moment we're targeting mostly um the alcohol industry mm -hmm. so we're thinking maybe like um like smaller beer store or wine store and stuff like that yeah. we've already been in communication with a few of them so that's pretty yeah and we want to really support local local industries because yeah, yeah. the local <coughs> sustainable goods industry really isn't priced as much as it should be so we want to help them do that as well mm -hmm. cool so you two obviously didn't know each other before Compass, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Did you meet at Audacious or was it before Audacious? Yeah, so the first session of Audacious, we rocked up and I was sitting on the couch all alone, a bit too scared <laughs> to mingle, and he came over and sat with me. Yeah, yeah, so I just, I was like, oh, well, I don't know anyone here. I'll just go have a chat with that dude. And um, yeah, that's how we met. And from from there, I think we always, like, imagine, we matched pretty well. And mm. after that, we always thought about doing audacious together yeah. trying to develop an idea together so we're cool. really similar got similar interests and yeah, personalities yeah. so we get along really well yeah we're both athletes right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right 
So I'm, I used to, well, I'm from Canada and I used to do cross country skiing. Okay. Lots of competition and stuff. Um, and math. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I do motorsport as well. Yeah. yeah. World champion as well. We yeah, that's right. Still <laughs> earlier on this year, I was uh, crowned World Ash Group champion. So. You still got the bracelet on? Yeah, yeah, I do. I love this. Hopefully <laughs> the cameras can see it. Um, it's the coordinates of the finish line from when Matt uh, became world champion, which yeah. is pretty awesome. Pretty yeah. yeah. Someone called her, you know, wake up in the morning and just look down and remind myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would imagine it was hard to forget, but <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> we'll leave that. Um, so obviously met during Audacious. Was Compass one of your ideas? Was or is that something you co-created together? No. So I, I came into Audacious with an idea for a new lock. Yeah, and I came in with an idea to um for a laundry service for students. So okay. Two complete different ideas, yeah. <laughs> and we were like, hey, you know. We'll just chat and then we started <laughs> working on I think we started working on the lock idea. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. And then we thought this is probably a bit too big to start up mm -hmm. at the moment. So yeah. we're like, let's try what, make what was the lock idea, if you don't mind me asking? Uh so using your phone, uh sort of the same capabilities like as NFC technologies. Yeah, as what we're yeah. using, but to be able to unlock <coughs> doors. So say around the university campus. Yeah. Um and then we were like, Hey, you know, what else could we do? We really like the idea of NFC because mm. not heaps of people know about it but it's a really useful tool mm. so we i think the first one that we came up with was um sending or coding nfc tags that go straight to businesses websites and um onto their wi-fi so instead of having the wi-fi password on the wall or having to ask ask the um the staff of the wi-fi password they just have to tap their phone onto it and it automatically connects to wi-fi cool yeah. so but, we were, like we would have sold that to like coffee shops and yeah like restaurants and stuff like that but then we thought it's yeah. probably not going to be too big <laughs> and it's reasonably simple so we just kept thinking keep thinking and because we we had sort of a solution as such so mm. we really wanted to use nfc in our, in our idea but we were trying to find a problem that we were that we wanted to solve mm. yeah. um which was something that we learned from audacious which is really good yeah. um, focus so, on the problem <laughs> yeah it's a big one um and then yeah i was just going through um ideas and memories in my head and i was in spain earlier on this year and my parents were trying to buy some nice bottles of wine mm. and the um dude at duty free that was helping them spoke oh he spoke a bit of english but he had no idea about the bottles of wine all mm. the labels were in spanish he was like no help at all so they ended up you know buying six bottles of wine and i think they only liked like two of them uh, so i was like okay. hey you know what if, about yeah. giving information through that so yeah like i think like the idea around Compass is really to bring the experience of a professional salesperson mm. but to you on your phone. So, I mean, like if you go to, for example, here in Dunedin, Emerson's, right? And you go into Emerson's, you can really, like, you can talk with the brewer, mm -hmm. you can talk with him and then he'll give you like professional knowledge about the beer, right? But then if you're in New World, well, and you want to buy Emerson's, you, you'll never have access to that information mm. unless you do like a really, a really big and inconvenient research on your phone. But then what we want to, yeah, what we want to offer is just with a simple tap on your phone, you can get all of that knowledge. Yeah, customer well, based or yeah. customer oriented information. information. Yeah. So is that four ideas that you got through before getting to Compass? Yeah, I think it was yeah. about four, four yeah. or five different ideas that we <laughs> yeah, had yeah. before we got to this one and we're like, right, this one's good, we'll stick with it. Yeah. So what was the, the process of elimination for each one? Was that just exploring it a little bit more and going, oh, we think there's a dead end or was it talking to other people and them not liking it? What was the reason for sort for of acting? Sort of a bit of both. Mm -hmm. So the first one that we came up together was the one having like Wi-Fi and websites through it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then we sort of came on to this idea of being able to give people information. And we went through, oh, we changed that idea like, I don't know how many yeah, times. A few times. But um, talking to Rachel at Audacious, and she was like, you need to focus on the problem. Like, what's the problem that you're trying to solve? Mm. And then once we had the problem of consumers, you know, are wanting to know more and more information about the products that they're purchasing and consuming in regards to sustainability and traceability, mm -hmm. um, we, we tried to really nail down our solution to it. Mm. And through talking to businesses, we've sort of narrowed narrowed down and cut out different aspects of the business and bought in new aspects to try match what they want. Sure. Yeah, because I feel like talking to businesses was really good because it actually helped us to find out what consumers want to know. Mm. And because before, I mean, like, if you don't actually get out there and like try to speak with the, your consumers, right? Like you won't get information, like you don't know what you're going to do and you don't know what you want to offer. But totally. yeah, and then we, we really had like a good push and with Rachel's contact and Donna's contact, we were able to talk to a few businesses in like a day. So it was really good. Cool. Yeah. And, and was the, 
idea in its current form the same as when you first started talking to those businesses or did it kind of change as you got some feedback? No, so it sort of changed as we got the feedback. That's okay. where we went from um, having each specific product having a tag, tag. on its own, okay. so on, the, on the actual product. Um, they said, right, it's going to be, you know, too costly. It's going to be like an extra 15, 20 cents per, you know, yeah, per really, item. Yeah. It's going to put our costs way up. So we're like, we, we thought, right, how can we solve that? Chuck it on the shelf instead. And then there were a few other other um, issues that we uh, come across talking to businesses that we um, changed our idea for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. So it was good. And I think, like, the main the main thing we got out of talking to businesses was that, they want to offer that knowledge to consumers because mm. they have it, right? They just want to put it out there, but they can't. There's no way of like, well, there is, but there's no convenient way for consumers to get that knowledge like about the product. Mm. And yeah. So that's a really good point. So what what are the existing alternatives or what, but does, if I'm a consumer and I want this yeah. information right now, mm -hmm. but I can't get your app, what yeah. do I currently do? So, well, at first, like this, the simplest and probably the most popular is just a Google search. Yeah, so you just like Google the name of the business, like where it's from. Um, but then you, you always end up with like bundles of unnecessary information, mm. right? Yeah. Um, a few others would be like some review apps, um, like wine recommendation apps and stuff like that. But this like, it's also inconvenient because you actually have to, um, well, open, like download an app where a compass, you just scan the NFC tag, you don't mm. have to have any app or anything. It opens up on a, on like a, a new web page. page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. web browser. Um, and I mean like the, mo uh, like the most convenient way to get their information is obviously the, the product label, mm. but it's not like it doesn't have that much information and you can't like just add a recipe on your product label, right? Or like matching products and stuff like that. Yeah, there's, yeah. Only, there's only so much you can add in a product label. Yeah, but sure. um, when, when going onto the brand's website or the product's website, you're given so much information mm -hmm. and the consumers just read through it, trying to find what they want to know. Mm. Whereas using Compass, it'll be fully customer-based customer or customer-orientated information. So okay. the things that the customers are wanting to know. So can the customer select, I want to see these types of information and then when they scan that's the only type of information that comes yeah, up yeah so hopefully in the future once we've sort of got a base we're looking to mm. develop it more so coming up with an app and then being able to have a personalized profile on it for things like that if they're really into uh shopping sustainability that will mm. be one of the first things that comes up but also things like if you're purchasing food and you have specific allergies mm -hmm. so you're um, allergic to let's say nuts and uh you're lactose free if you tap um you know tap your phone on the compass tag on this item of food it'll mm. pop up with an alert saying this has nuts okay. so but yeah, at this stage, it's you know it's really early stages for us, but hopefully that's what we're looking in, into the future. So, are you going through a process to prioritise those features in terms of where you start? What's most important? Yeah, so we, we we're trying to decide and talk to customers or consumers about what information is most important to them, mm -hmm. and yeah, we're just deciding where to put it as well as trying to design our website as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Have you put any thought into customer acquisition or how you're going to get users to find out about Compass? Yeah, so um, I think, well, we're gonna do lots of um, um, marketing on like social media mm -hmm. and Instagram and stuff like Because you need a phone to have Compass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I feel like, like the goal is really gonna create an awareness around the tags. So mm. you know how like everyone knows about the Bluetooth logo and stuff like that. Well, we really want like the Compass logo becomes recognizable mm. and that people, like when you walk in the store, you see the Compass logo, you're like, oh, cool. I can have more. Kind of like Shazam. Yeah. It's yeah. starting yeah. to catch yeah, on, such. right? Yeah. 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 And also um, going <laughs> to uh, sort of like festivals yeah, and well. uh, food festivals and things like that. Although that's not our target audience because there is somebody there mm. that's able to tell you about the products. It's just getting the consumers familiar with with Compass and getting them to um, find out how to use it. So yeah. then when they're in a situation where they don't have that salesperson, they can use Compass instead. Yeah, so that's like the main, like from here, our goal is to start and try to be, like do us a try, do them some, doing some trials at certain mm. festivals and yeah, starting to create the awareness around the tags. Cool. Have you got any festivals or trials lined up? Uh, so we are talking to somebody hopefully 
mm. we will be in a festival in the next few months. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> we're, we're just in the talking stages at yeah. the moment. Yeah. And mm. we're not too sure. But hopefully. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Can't months, say yeah. too much. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, because the, the craft beer festival was on the cards, but then it was a bit of a short runway, right? From the end of Audacious to, yeah, so, to getting so in there. Yeah, that, so that's pretty tough being in a few weeks and we're smack bang in the middle of uni exams of at course. the moment. Yeah. yeah. We're, <laughs> we're trying to build this website. We're trying to get in contact with people. We're trying to do these exams. So it's, it's a bit of a rough time of year. Yeah. But we're, yeah. we're trying to fiddle in. Yeah. No, def- like the goal is to have something this summer, right? Yeah. And then... Um, so like I'm going back to Canada in the summer. Mm-hmm. I'll do like some research on my side. Same thing with Matt. Yeah, and hopefully we'll, I'll be able to talk yeah. to a few more customers and people mm. that we could potentially work with yeah, over yeah. the summer. Mm-hmm. And then when you're back next year, we'll hopefully hopefully be able to fully <laughs> yeah. launch. <laughs> Just, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. <laughs> you mentioned obviously exam time yeah. at the moment and mm-hmm. that being quite a stress. What's it been like running a startup as students? Oh, I, like I feel like it's it's pretty good. I mean, like it, like. In your like in your uni semester, right? You, mm. you usually have the time to do extra activities, and Audacious is it's really fun. It's not like something like oh I have to I have to go to Audacious, <laughs> right? It's more like oh yes I have Audacious tonight, and I mean yes it's lots of work, but it's a lot of work. But at the end it always pays off, and mm. you just gain so much experience. And I feel like like my lecturers want to be happy to hear that, but I feel like I've learned a lot more at Audacious <laughs> than I, I did during my whole semester at uni. What yeah. are you studying? At uni? I'm studying marketing. Marketing, and, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, I'm marketing. studying commerce as well. And yeah, answering <laughs> your question before, um, if I was to do this any time in my life, I'd want to do it as a student. Yeah, for sure. sure. Because yeah. uh, when we were doing um, uh, consumer research, we uh, <laughs> we had a survey and we just sent it out to our halls Facebook well, hall, halls of residence Facebook pages and our own Facebook pages and within within a day we had like 145 responses. Wow! So <laughs> and especially being in Dunedin, sort of like startup central, it, it's really cool because the amount of support that we can get through Audacious and startup Dunedin and through the uni is it's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. And have you seeked some support outside of Startup Dunedin? I think you've pitched Momentum before, right? I did. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've pitched for my for another completely different project. Um, but actually, so when I pitched Momentum, I didn't have that whole like background. I didn't have yeah. that whole audacious experience. Sure. So it was. I feel like it was a good good experience first, just because you know you're talking in front of lots of people and it's stressful. It's stressful. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's not like. At Audacious, when I, I like when I would rock up on the stage, I felt a lot more confident with my with the idea. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Well, Audacious yeah. is a really good first yeah. step for anyone that's oh, willing yeah. to <coughs> wanting to sort of start up a business or has an idea or just wants to gain the knowledge. Yeah, yeah. No, because I mean, like I've always wanted to start a business, but I, in high school there was nothing really there. There's mm. nothing like no pro, no in Canada, yeah. yeah, in Canada. So no yeah. program such as Audacious, and same thing. So I went to like a middle school. And the same thing, there was just nothing there to like, to just push your idea to the next mm. level, right? Because it's, it's nice to have an idea on paper and stuff, but then it's also really cool to be able to talk with people who already like run startup and stuff, mm. and they are able to help you to develop it and to push it to the next level. Totally, totally. That's, that's pretty mean, yeah. Is there something before Audacious <coughs> that you felt like you were doing wrong or wouldn't have done right, and then after Audacious you felt like you've you've taken made t- had some sort of learning mm-hmm. yeah. that I guess would have pushed you forward yeah definitely uh, thinking of solutions instead of problems yeah. is the huge one I think for okay. both of us yeah yeah because uh, like I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur and start up my own business and like looking back at all of the ideas I had I would just try think of new ideas to do things and yeah. even though you know the way of doing it at the moment is perfectly fine and that's the way that people would want to do it mm. so looking back if I had the um, had the knowledge to well had the thought of thinking of the problem first then I, I think that would have been a lot a lot better for me yeah I mean for me it was so when I pitch in front of momentum um like I was working for that uh, on that idea for ages and mm. then but I was at the exact same well I was close to the, the like I, I built a pitch right but it took me like quite a long time mm. but then with audacious it was just like putting everything on paper, a better structure, working with the lean canvas and everything. Mm, yeah. So it's just so so much quicker. And it's really cool to see that improvement that now when you have an idea, well, it just it's a lot quicker to get to like a decent stage and somewhere where you can start talking to people, start talking to businesses. So. Yeah. 
I think using the structure that we got from Audacious, we put our pitch together in a couple of hours yeah. sitting oh, around yeah. the table. <laughs> yeah. Well, well like yeah. We, we, did, we, did, we definitely did change it around, but it's just like getting that base down, we just smacked it out in a few hours mm-hmm. because yeah. of the you know the tools that we learned from Audacious. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, you can be pulled in so many different directions when yeah. you start out. If yeah. you want to Google how to start a business, there's mm-hmm. millions of results and <laughs> yeah. everybody's going to have a different opinion. Yeah. Um, so it's cool. It's cool that it gave you guys that focus and, yeah. and, and you know narrowed down what, where you should be spending your time. Definitely. And, yeah. what you should be looking at the early stage so how did each of you find out about audacious how did you come across it um uh, so for me actually i found it out i found out through momentum okay um i so when after i did momentum uh, elliot recommended me oh like do you know about audacious it'd be mm-hmm. really cool um but actually now that i think about it i i think i saw you on my first day of uni really yeah yeah and the like at the market sales oh at intensity yeah yeah City, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah yeah outside the museum yeah, yeah and my friends were like oh you should go see that like you should just go like maybe have a look <laughs> and then I, I think i talked to you and then like but then i was like oh my english is not strong enough yet like i'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into something like that and then yeah, second semester was just perfect. You just wouldn't know it. And, yeah. You wouldn't know it that his yeah. English isn't strong enough, right? Oh. Yeah, no, he's, he's pretty good now. He's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I found out about Audacious, my first lecture of uni. Rachel came okay. in and told everyone about this cool program called Audacious. And I was like, sweet, entrepreneurship, that sounds like me. So at, at the end of the lecture, I ran down and got her details and all of that and signed up. I actually signed up in semester one, but I was yeah. so busy in semester one training for World Champs and... Uh, uni as well I, I had the time to go to one session yeah I think and there was one where I filled in a survey and won 50 bucks it was sort of like yeah I better go to the session <laughs> but uh, then I was like right I really want to do this program so I signed up again in semester two yeah and luckily I did because I wouldn't have met Oliver doing yeah. that so yeah there you yeah. Go. sometimes things are meant to be right definitely mm-hmm. yeah right. hard to balance with the world champs though Either yeah way, that, those that, things it was up. pretty tricky training like 11 times a week and having uni as well so they're hard to fit in yeah yeah understandable understandable so it was a great celebration night for you guys um, yeah. at the end. <laughs> yeah, it was really uh, cool. Obviously, you won the advisory board package. Mm-hmm. Have you had a chance to reach out to Pulse and Higgs yet? Or are you waiting until after exams? We've had, um, we're getting in contact with them soon. We've sort of yeah. uh, been in contact them, with them um, in the past few days. But after this, I think we were, we were planning on flicking yeah. them an email yeah. and hopefully meeting with them before. between our exams before the holidays. Mm-hmm. Cool. Do you kind of know what to expect with the package? Um, not really, honestly. Not I feel really. like it'll just be a really good learning experience, and like obviously these people, like so. I think we met a few of them through Audacious, mm. and all the sessions with them were really cool. So mm. uh, I'm sure it'll be really fun and lots of lots of good knowledge. Yeah, yeah. definitely the advice I think is going to be yeah. a big one oh, for yeah, us because yeah. I mean at the end of the day we are two 19 year old boys <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> studying in commerce at the University of Otago. Yeah. So I think advice is going to be a real big one for us mm. and sort of pointing us in the right direction and telling us hey have you considered this and this should be your first step and Mm. also getting all of the background stuff right like our financials and um accounts and law stuff as well yeah yeah making sure we're doing everything legally (laughs) yeah Yeah. totally and hopefully some good networks that happen to yeah yeah, definitely that's for sure yeah getting contacts it's about who you know so yeah yeah Yeah. exactly exactly so the other thing that came out of the pitch night for you guys is obviously it was live streamed um, and we had a watch party in Invercargill. Apparently some of them watched the podcast too, so hi Invercargill if anybody <laughs> from Coin South's watching. Um, there were some developers in Invercargill that yeah. ended up reaching out to you as well. Um, you've met with them recently, how did that go? Yeah, so we had a meeting with them uh, late last week and they, um, yeah, they, they rang me and said, hey, you know, we'd like to come meet with you guys and chat to you about your idea. Yeah. So they came in and were asking us all these questions about our, <laughs> about our idea and gave us advice on um, what we should do in regards to our website and should we consider an app and all of the sort mm. of yeah. technology advice that we were sort of wanting. Mm. And that's sort of given us a good base. We've tried and started yeah. to build, um, build a website. A website yeah. I mean, yeah. like, we're not... I do a little bit of design, but nothing, like, nothing too big. Mm-hmm. So it's at this point, it's like we're really trying to find a way to build a website mm. to be able to show to businesses that we actually have something. It's not only like an idea, it's actually a, like something that you can hold in your hand or that you, you can see on your phone, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, so it's really good yeah. getting that, you know, first bit of advice and here's your first step. Yeah. This is what you should do. Any tricky questions? 
from them. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. I think it was more of just a conversation in a chat. It was pretty casual. Yeah. yeah which okay. was good. It wasn't like we're getting a roasting. Yeah. yeah cool. Really <laughs> yeah, it's ideal. It's all, you don't you don't necessarily need a roasting at this exactly. stage. Yeah. <laughs> um. So what's on the cards for next year? Are you hoping to be working on campus, balancing it with your studies? Are you planning on taking some time off and focusing on campus? What does that look like? Um. I think we're gonna try. It. Like, I mean, the first step now is to do like a, a trial. Yeah. And then after that, we'll try to balance it. Like if, if the trial work, we'll, we'll like integrate, integrate the feedback and stuff. And then after that, it's just going to be like continuing the study and trying to balance okay. campus in the uni. Yeah, so definitely yeah. continuing to study. Oh yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, try balance this on the on the sides. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we, we've we've talked to people and they said, yeah, we, we think there is a market for it. But like I said, getting out there and doing it's a different thing. And mm. actually seeing yourself, you know, is this going to work? So hopefully it does. Yeah, yeah. Really hope it does. Um, but if not, then there's some things that will change. And yeah, yeah. And but you've almost got to expect things to change, right? Yeah, for yeah. Sure. Of, of you course. Look I mean, look, look at the past <laughs> ten weeks or so. We've yeah. completely changed our idea like four times. So. Oh, 100 percent. And you look at Snapchat, right? Exactly. It's a completely different product now to what it was, you know, oh, for sure. Ten years ago. Yeah. Or if it was out ten years ago, <laughs> seven, seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And also, yeah, it's definitely going to change. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was just going to say, like, going to uni is, uh, is also pretty cool because actually, like, you can see that you can actually, like, something we're doing at Audacious, well, we're also doing it, like, in the marketing class and stuff. Mm. So it's really nice to be able to, like, link both of them. And apply it yeah. into a real-world yeah. context. Yeah. I totally yeah. get that. Apply the knowledge, and, an, yeah. and another good thing is when you go on to talk to people instead of saying, yeah hey, we're a business, we want to try to sell your product. We say, hey, we're two students from yeah. the university <laughs> oh. doing a project, could we come chat to you? Yeah. And they're sort of like, oh yeah, sweet, they're students, come have a chat. <laughs> a so it's sort of a bit of a green screen in front of us, which yeah. is uh, always good to back on. They're time. a lot more receptive, right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Saying you're studying at the uni and you're working on a project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I totally get that, I totally get that. Um, I, I also completely have empathy with the applying learning in a yeah. It to something you're actually doing in real life. And mm-hmm. um, the best grades I've had at uni was when I did a paper for Startup Dunedin on Startup Dunedin. Oh, oh, and yeah. it was just so much easier to understand yeah. the concepts and apply oh, them. For sure. Yeah, yeah, it's always much better learning about something that you're passionate about as well mm. and applying it. Because, I, I mean, I don't fall asleep in class, but some of the things you're like, when am I ever going to use this in life? Whereas, you know, in another class, you're like, hey, I could actually apply this to what I'm doing in the moment yeah. through Startup Dunedin. And yeah. Encompass, cool, sure. cool. So, was Audacious what you expected going in? Was the the pitch did it kind of match up with what you received, or were there some parts that were were different? Um, I feel like it was a little bit like expected. Okay, but what in terms of like pitch and in terms of like um the ex, the whole experience, but mm-hmm. like there's certainly like stuff that I I could have never imagined before. At least kind of like oh, how often you have to like get out there and how often you have to just like go talk to businesses, you know? And I feel like that was a really, that was something that really changed like my vision of startups and of mm. business. It's like, if like, you gotta go talk to your consumers, right? You gotta go co- talk to them because after all, they're gonna buy your products. And yeah, that was really cool to have that little extra push, the little like the contacts from, like, from you, yeah. from Rachel, from Donna, so. Yeah, it was cool. But overall, like, you know, it's just, it like it's it was quite similar to momentum in a way. Yeah. But Audacious was more more out there. Mm. More yeah. And more hands on in terms of yeah, the ex- process. Hand, right? yeah, that's the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was uh <clears throat> pretty much what I expected, but I didn't expect to learn so much and actually come out the end with something that, that could actually work. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's full of twists and turns and surprises and free beer and pizza which is always good as well <laughs> i love that part of your video at the start of the oh yeah well, of the i had night. to be honest it's like what's your best part of, what's your favorite part about audacious i mean the learning's cool but free beer on a wednesday is always and you're still well. first year right yeah yeah i'll oh, wait until next year mate you'll have <laughs> we'll the be free in, beer we'll and pizza every day oh, perfect <laughs> should have timed it better <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, was there a part of audacious or one of the the sessions that you found particularly useful I feel like the three first sessions yeah. were really, really good, mm-hmm. where we were trying to really focus on the problem, right? The, I, the whole idea development thing was a bit like pushed, yeah, and okay. we just we started like at zero. It was what was the problem and how are you going to tackle the problem, and 
actually the concept of the like the birthday hat was really good is if you like start thinking about the solution too quickly well then you get a birthday hat and the, what is it the hat of shame or i something? think i think ben called it the hat of shame yeah, so yeah. Ben, one of our facilitators <laughs> had a hat and if one of the students started talking about the solution rather than the problem they had to wear the hat yeah, yeah. for until somebody else i guess yeah, did yeah. it as well and i think um, like we, we didn't have any hat but yeah. we should have <laughs> we were, we were i tried to be i tried through. to be pretty quiet there yeah. <laughs> like i was going to say something yeah but yeah definitely for that um, oh. definitely the first three sessions i think were the most most yeah. useful i think mainly because we didn't necessarily have an exact idea mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, well. but um i think i learned the most out of those first three sessions than any other and like for the next i think it was like for the first five or six weeks that we'd go in and talk to rachel she's like sweet what's your problem mm -hmm. mm. before we could say anything else so so are you happy that you started without a concrete idea or would you have preferred to have come up with something concrete yeah well i think we both could have gone through audacious with the ideas that we had mm -hmm. mm. and came out with something at the end but um I feel like like what was cool was to see that even if like what you're working on is not your your like your base idea, mm. well, it's still a good idea, you know, and it's it's always going to change, and that's yeah, that's something we learned quite quickly mm. because it was going from an idea and then oh, but maybe we could do that oh, and then having a little talk with Rachel and then just realizing that nah, not at all, it's not a good <laughs> idea, and then just switching and then switching again, so lo lots of movement, and I feel like Audacious has really like teach me that that movement around an idea is okay yeah that's, okay. that's a part of it's a part of developing that idea were you quite right? attached to certain components yeah. at the start yeah, yeah. i was like yeah. okay i want to do that and then but then like you have to adapt to your consumers your consumers are not going to adapt to your idea right mm. they're just gonna go buy something else yeah. but exactly yeah. exactly and i think that's pretty cool working as a duo as well as well oh, i'd yeah. have something and he'd be like nah that's not gonna work <laughs> and i'd have something oh he'd have something yeah. i was like bro that's that like, that's, that's shocking <laughs> yeah and also going down talking to people as well mm -hmm. and yeah. changing your idea through that yeah. yeah 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 you put up a good point like you're building your business exists for your consumers yeah. your consumers don't exist to buy from your business exactly and a lot of people get that around the yeah. wrong, wrong yeah. way when they first start out yeah um, you think you have this amazing idea and you're like swear i can sell millions of them get out there and it's like only two people want it yeah, Whereas, or, yeah. or even worse nobody yeah, no, wants no one it, wants except it. for you right yeah so um, you've got to really base it around the consumer and who's going to actually purchase it and buy it yeah exactly exactly and sometimes what they want isn't the pretty shiny thing that you've imagined in your head exactly um, sometimes yeah. what they want is the kind of duct taped together not quite perfect solution mm -hmm. that gets the job done that's um, right but at a lower cost so yeah yeah oh interesting i'm glad you guys took that away at the very least mm. from yeah. <laughs> because that's probably one of the most important yeah. things yeah and the, the other sessions were helpful as well oh yeah for sure <laughs> even like around the financials and stuff like mm. i mean actually what was really really cool is at the same time we we're doing financials in my finance and accounting class we were seeing kind of the same like fixed variable cost kind mm -hmm. of thing and then i was having a finance class and then coming to audacious on the wednesday night i was able to apply everything <laughs> like everything i've learned and then just being able to do spreadsheets and stuff like that right after so was, that was really cool i think yeah like we've got multiple excel spreadsheets of just all of our costs <laughs> yeah. and how we're going to price it and everything as well yeah. have so. you shown them to your flatmates or your, your hall of residence mates <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah my friend tagged me in uh this thing on facebook the other day it's like um was it's like it? a tag yeah. mate that, that told you about an amazing excel spreadsheet but you don't really give a shit it's <laughs> yeah. like ouch that really hurts because it's so true <laughs> yeah. yeah no my friends were like oh yeah well you're pretty good so how about you make this spreadsheet for the flat next year I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah sure yeah you gotta be careful what you ask for <laughs> yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. so do things feel real yet is it is it sunk in or do you feel like you're kind of just playing business i know a lot of people when they first start especially in startup in the startup world yeah. it can kind of feel like you're just playing and having fun mm -hmm. but does it feel like you're you're in the real stuff now or so i reckon it still feels like we're playing around having a bit of fun because we haven't yeah. actually got something out there we're not selling yet sure um we're still sort of developing it all but once we i think once we have our first trial our first yeah. trial and actually get out there and start um selling our product and getting that first sale then i think it's going to be like yeah yeah this mm. this feels real so but even like i mean like after that when we got the um when the developers contacted us i was like oh like <laughs> it just gave me a little shock like oh that could actually happen right it's yeah it could actually be real yeah but definitely like a lot we, we still have lots of work to put in the idea and the whole concept behind it but i think that i mean it's doable and it could be a mm. pretty good idea so you say you've got lots of work to put in mm -hmm. what's the biggest challenge for compass or what, what are you thinking about in the shower um, when you <laughs> when you're pondering what's what's next 
how are we gonna get people to buy it? Okay. I yeah. feel like, and I feel feel like once we've got that first that first customer, everything's gonna be a lot easier. Mm-hmm. But mm. it's actually getting out there and partnering with a business that is wanting to to work with us and to support us, and because mm-hmm. we want to support them as well. But mm. I, I just think that finding that first customer. yeah finding that first one's gonna be a big. You know, definitely a big landmark for us, but also a big challenge. And you haven't tried to sell it yet, have you? We haven't. We've talked to businesses yeah. and we've yeah. bounced the idea back and forth, but we haven't been like, do you hey, want to buy this? Yeah, because it's yeah. just not ready yet. Right? No, exactly. I feel like another, like that's a really good point, Matt. And another big part of the work, I think, is just going to be like developing website database. And mm. I mean, because we don't like we're able to do some of the stuff right but we really have to take it to the next level the professional level and yeah 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 it's pretty hard being two commerce students instead of two computer science students yeah We've just being able to write code and build this awesome as website yeah. where we sort of need to reach out there and get help yeah okay and that yeah that's also a challenge trying to get people to help us especially when we don't have too much money in the bank and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i mean after that another like challenge gonna go is gonna be like try to go and get some funding and get ca- yeah for your cash flow yeah yeah, yeah. get some money yeah. in there but yeah okay yeah okay it's a really really exciting journey that's for sure yeah and definitely just definitely. can't wait till that next stage can't yeah. wait to sell that first one <laughs> hopefully it happens hopefully yeah, yeah. Do, you, yeah. do you have any kind of objections to sale that you're expecting you, there's anything that you like people are probably going to push back on this aspect or so i feel like a, a potential big one's going to be sustainability mm-hmm. okay. um for a company, a company could be like, hey, we really want to work with you guys. You know, it's an awesome idea, but we don't want to show, or not just sustainability, but like we don't want to show this part of our business to the public mm. because it could potentially, uh, tur- you know, potentially turn them off, if mm. that's a word. Mm-hmm. I think you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're trying to say. Um, so, yeah. Like, because mm. I think like we're, we're going to try to develop like a system trying to rate businesses according to their sustainability. Mm. But we're really going to have to be careful to avoid greenwashing. Because mm. if people see our tags, they're going to be like, oh, sweet, oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's sustainable then. Mm-hmm. And not, not read it. Whereas yeah, if they tap it on, it's like a one out of five yeah. sustainability rating. And so. we're also going to have to be careful to, to like apply a really like um, like a stable, like like our, our criteria has to be always the same. Mm. Right? Mm. Like it needs a, to be constant. Like a standard. But then somehow yeah. still apply to a business that's 20x the size of another business, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we, scale, so it's yeah. going to be um, personalized and individualized to every every business and every product, but we mm. want to sort of keep a standard throughout every single every single business and product that we're working with. Are you in touch with anybody in the sustainability space? Uh, yes, yeah. so we talked to Jessica from the university sustainability office Mm -hmm. and that that was a really good chat that i had with her sort of um one of the main things that we came across was greenwashing and um how we could incorporate sustainability into what we're doing because that's a Mm. huge macro environment trend at the moment as people are wanting to shop more sustainably Mm. i mean like look at all the climate strikes that have happened over the past few weeks people like are really making changes to their lifestyles and we feel like incorporating sustainability into what we're doing could Mm. really help uh, not only help the consumers, but also help us in regards to uh, sales and getting businesses on board. Mm-hmm. Mm, totally, helping them tell their story better as well, especially exactly. if they are really sustainable. Yeah, because again, yeah. sustainability is quite a hard thing to find when you're uh, wanting to know more about a product because mm. it's not often on the product label. And then you're going to have to go on their website, go onto the About page, go down to sustainability, open it up, and then it's this report, and then you need to find out about it. So it's a real mm. it's a real hard thing to find. So. And it can be difficult to quantify, right? Exactly. You know, yeah. something could be, have a sustainable, you could have a sustainable supply chain or, or even an ethical supply chain, but then you could be packaging it in glass and shipping it overseas and it could be really heavy. Yeah. yeah. Um, in which case you're, you know, using more carbon to get it to a certain spot. So <laughs> exactly. How, yeah. how you measure things is going to be really tough with that, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so it's um, going to be something that we really need to, need to uh, be careful looking into and in trying to develop. So, yeah. Yeah. Another big challenge. <laughs> Another big challenge, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Um, so you almost touched on this before. Mm-hmm. If you could recruit anyone to the team right now, yeah. who would you recruit? Who would you be looking to bring on board? Coda. Yeah, Coda. Something like okay. a kind of a, a tech co-founder maybe. Um, Somebody to yeah. build our website and do all the things that we can't yeah, in mm. regards Coda. to like the technology side. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, if someone's keen, well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, that'd be really cool. <laughs> That can be a tough role to fill, eh? Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Because they're working for love in a lot of ways at this, at this early stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially is, at yeah. this early stage. We, we, oh, we're not even paying ourselves. It's just no. this idea. We don't have anything. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, no, it's, they've got to see the big goal in the end. And, yeah. But, yeah. Because, like, we have lots of ideas and, like, we have lots of designs and we know what – we really know what we want to put on the database at, at this point. Mm. Um, but we just don't know how to put it on a website. Yeah. Like, we've been working with, like mm. – little like platforms like wix and stuff to try to develop something but it's it's never going to be as there's only as so much you yeah. can put on Wix, exactly and it's all the same you can't like uh customize it to what you want mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's exactly. pretty pretty standard and you guys are doing something slightly more complex than just a standard yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it can't yeah. just Dragon be website. just mm -hmm. this one website yeah, yeah. Mm. okay so yeah cool so it was a bit of a i guess tricky question if you were to time travel back in time and give yourselves i don't know six months ago or even 10 weeks ago just before the start of audacious some advice mm -hmm. um, about starting up again what would you tell yourselves what would you get yourselves to do differently or sooner in the process i reckon for me it would be like as i said a bit earlier really just get out there just mm. like if you have an idea like great but just mm. talk to people Mm. Like, I think I, I talk a lot with my friends at the college and then I just like knock on the door. Oh man, I had that idea. Like, what do you think about that? You know, but, and talking to friends is really good, but then you also have to go talk to your consumers and to businesses and stuff like that. So I feel like if we, for Audacious, like we, we didn't know what we wanted to do, right? But if we would have started trying to communicate with businesses at week two or week three, like some yeah. of the other teams did, mm. I feel like we, we would have, we could have gone a lot for, further. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, reach, reaching out and talking to more people, mm -hmm. especially more businesses. Yeah. Earlier on, instead of <laughs> within the last two days before our pitch. Yeah. <laughs> Not I mean, that like, anyone knows that. <laughs> we had a meeting well, We had yeah. a meeting with a business the same day of our pitch. Yeah. Like in the morning of our pitch, we just went. And yeah, and then we changed yeah. like a few yeah. sentences yeah. On, on our pitch, pitch to, yeah. to base that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if I was to go back in time uh, to the start of Audacious I'd probably say to myself, like I've said multiple times, it's just focus on a problem mm. instead of this wonderful solution that you have in your head. But um, would you have believed yourself? Would you have trusted yourself? Or do you think you would have just been like, nah, stuff here. I'm going to do it this way anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, sort of, sort of. Uh, like, I feel like my original idea could possibly still work. It's just on yeah. the back burners at the moment because there's so many other things going on. Totally. Um, and that could be something that we do in the future. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But uh, I feel like that's more of a, like I came up with, I came up with the solution before I came up with the problem. Yeah. Mm. And then I made myself sort of like forcefully think of a problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the. Yeah. But then going back further than that, um, to give myself some advice, it would be, if you have an idea, just on this for anyone, if you have an idea, just actually do something about it. Yeah. Because mm. you're not going to make any money or talk to any new people just sitting in the back of your mind. Yeah. It's, you know, getting that getting that first foot through the door and then one foot after another from that and just actually trying to, you know, talk to people about it and, and get contacts and potentially, yeah. you know, start something up. And also, like, if, if your idea changes through yeah. the process, well, it's not bad. It's not a bad thing, right? Yeah. Don't You're be probably going to change. end up, like, having a, even a better idea or a better product. It's just it's just part of the process, and mm. I feel like that's something we've I've really learned at Audacious because before when I had ideas, it was always like, yeah, that's the idea, and like maybe doing some slight changes, but not not too much, right? But mm. Audacious really like it. It was just really like a mind opener, and it it, it, it just really like teach me how like that your idea can change, and it, it's normal that it's going to change. Yeah, don't be so, afraid yeah. of change because yeah. it's often for the better. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It's pretty good. Inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, final question. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's my list. So is there a message that you want our audience to take or do you even ask for anybody at home? Um, I mean, like, if we, like, for an ask, obviously, like, as we said, we're trying to do a, um, a trial. So that'd be really cool if we could do just, like, a just a little trial, put a few tags, see how, like, um, 
consumers are going to react to them at a business or a festival yeah business festival yes about so if anyone owns um especially a local business around dunedin or even the south island in new zealand in fact (laughs) um or anybody that works with uh like food festivals or any sort of kind of festivals where they're selling goods even local farmers markets and stuff just a place where we can get out and just test our products then that would be really good um also looking for somebody that can help us in regards to websites yeah and building the sort of database behind our product Mm -hmm. and of course funding (laughs) a bit of money is always always good and i feel like we could really benefit from that yeah that's for sure yeah um and if i had to like summarize everything in one sentence i think i'd just say go for it and don't be afraid of change yeah and and focus on the problem (laughs) awesome definitely focus on the problem (laughs) and don't be afraid of change Mm -hmm. yeah pretty much everything that you just said (laughs) That seems like a great way to end it. Matt, Ollie, cheers for coming on the show. Thanks Thanks so much, Steve. Cheers. Cheers.